Many of you have seen before videos we've done of Emmett. He's a little fellow who has Crab A's disease. This is a chronic, debilitating, fatal disease if not treated and caught very early. This doesn't need to happen. So I'm Emmett's pediatrician and have been since he was born. Watch this video all the way through because even though we're aware of this, in Oregon and in many states in the country, they are not doing newborn screening for Crab A's. And if you don't screen, you miss the window of opportunity to treat and avoid the very painful, slow, ultimate death at a very young age. Gratitude, thanks to Emmett for his mission on life to bring you this information. Check out the links in the description for how you can get involved. And at the very least, like and share this video so it reaches the numbers of people that it should reach. This video serves to help answer the question, should Oregon add Crab A to the newborn screening program? But first, what is Crab A? Hi, we are the Monacos. We live in Beaverton, Oregon. This is Emmett. He is five years old, but at two years old, he was diagnosed with Crab A. He is untreated because Oregon does not screen for Crab A, and we would like to share his story with you. Emmett was born healthy. At 18 months old, he lost the ability to walk. 100 plus doctor visits later, he received a diagnosis called Crab A, a fatal condition in which the nervous system disappears. During the diagnostic odyssey, Emmett lost the ability to talk, eat, crawl, and sit up on his own. He was in uncontrolled pain. He then lost his eyesight, some of his hearing, and now has half a dozen seizures a day. <laughs> Emmett is now a proud big brother and spends the majority of his day laying in the same spot on the couch. Since Emmett's body is shutting down, he requires um, extra help throughout the day, and one of the ways that we help him is with medications. He has multiple routine medications that he gets every day, and he has some that are given as needed. These are just the medications that go through his G-tube. He has other medications that are administered as like an inhaler or eye drops. Uh, so there are other routes that he gets meds as well. This is where his food is made. He is fed a plant-based formula with breast milk to help digestion, mixed with water. Then even more supplements. Miralax for constipation, lion's mane for brain health, vitamin C for immunity, SBI powder for gut health, complete amino acid for protein, vitamin D for bone health, DHA and MCT oil for brain health. Mix it all together, add it to the formula, heat and stir, pour into the feeding bag, connect the tube and hit run. This is repeated twice a day and runs for 20 hours. This is his nebulizer. The medication helps to loosen anything that's gathered in his lungs. This is the shaky vest. It breaks up anything that is in his lungs. This is the cough assist, and that helps to pull out anything that is left in his lungs. This is his pulse oximeter. It tells us uh, what his oxygen levels are, what his heart rate is. In addition to the nebulizer, shaky vest, cough assist, and pulse oximeter, Emmett also uses a stander to allow weight on his hips as his legs are slowly becoming dislocated, a suction machine to clear his secretions, a variety of splints and braces, supplemental oxygen via a concentrator or tank, and a feeding pump. We will now address the five most common misconceptions a state lab will bring to the table in opposition. It's too expensive to screen for Crab A. It's too rare at 1 in 100,000. It's not on the federal recommended list. Parents are just being emotional. The treatment option is ineffective. It's too expensive. The organ lab already has a machine to screen for Crab A, which negates the main financial burden. This is not the first time we've attempted to add Crab A to the newborn screening here in Oregon. In 2019, this committee heard expert testimony from Dr. Michael Gelb, who created the technology to screen for Crab A. He stated that it would only take an additional 10 to 30 cents per test. Since Emmett was not screened and is untreated, he costs the state of Oregon $500,000 a year in medical bills. Screening for Crab A may result in healthcare savings or a net positive to the state budget. It's too rare. Out of the 58 conditions Oregon currently screens for, over half are the same rarity as Crab A 
or more rare. Organ screens for 13 conditions that are one in a million. At 50,000 births a year, it takes 20 years to diagnose an Oregonian for a one in a million condition versus one new Crabbe diagnosis every two years. At the top of the list is DE Red, where only two cases have been reported worldwide since 1990. That's a rate of one in 50 million. Crabbe is so common that just a short drive down the road from Emmett is a baby girl named Lucy who was just diagnosed with Crabbe. We're the Johnsons and we live in Beaverton. And our daughter Lucy is our only child. She's six months old and was diagnosed with Crabbe on January 7th. During this time, we should be experiencing joyous first with Lucy. First coos, first giggle, first words even. But instead, we're experiencing scary firsts. First MRI, first pain medication, first surgery. I've seen my daughter smile once. I have no pictures to remember this as I didn't think it would be the last time. We'll never hear Lucy laugh. Lucy will never call us mama or dada. We will never get to see Lucy crawl or take her first steps, let alone the other thousands of happy moments you get with your child in their lifetime. We've been robbed of all of this and more um, because Oregon doesn't screen for Crab A. And had this bill been passed in 2019, doctors have told us that Lucy could have received treatment that would improve her quality and quantity of life. So supporting this bill does nothing for us. Um, it's too late for Lucy. Um, we will be blessed if she makes it to her second birthday. But it doesn't have to be too late for the next child whose parents have never heard of this disease. No parent should ever have to experience this when something can be done. No parent should have to hear that their child is dying. That's why we support expanded newborn screening. It's not on the RUSP. The federal government maintains a list of recommended conditions to screen for known as the RUSP. Those in opposition will reference that Crab A is not listed on the RUSP. Oregon, like most states, does not follow the RUSP and in addition screens for conditions not listed on the RUSP anyway. Regardless, science moves faster than bureaucracy. Parents are just emotional. Parents of children with a terminal diagnosis may potentially be emotional. Emmett has 17 doctors including a neurologist, pulmonologist, physiatrist, gastroenterologist, geneticist, orthopedist, orthotist, crab a specialist, dietitian, optometrist, audiologist, speech pathologist, occupational and physical therapist. Each of these doctors, by their own admission, have stated that parents become the expert in their child's condition. I have a bachelor's of science in nursing and worked as a maternity nurse for over five years in the Portland metro area. I performed the newborn blood spot screening hundreds of times. I've spent over a thousand nights staring at the ceiling wanting to ensure that no other child and family has to suffer like ours has these last three years. In that time, I have resolved that it is my professional and ethical duty to pursue adding Crab A to the newborn screening, not just here in Oregon, but across the nation. The treatment is ineffective. If a state lab were to tell me that the treatment is ineffective, I would say they are quoting old data. Once a year, we fly out to New York to participate in a leukodystrophy symposium where all the experts and leading scientists report the most current research to families affected by these diseases. I've met multiple individuals who have been treated, and all of them are living a higher quality of life. Some of them have even been in my home. The treatment is so effective that the FDA is fast-tracking clinical trials for gene therapy, which would be a cure. That option is only available to those who have been treated. The only way to be treated is to be screened at birth. It's also worth noting that the lab screens for conditions where there is no treatment available. Let's meet a young man in Oregon with Crab A who was treated. Um, my name is Michael Wilson. I am 10 years post-transplant, and my favorite hobby is video games. Do people even believe you have Crab A? Maybe they do, maybe they don't. Most likely, no. Marshall is my uh, older brother. He was a very, very sick child. He couldn't walk, he couldn't talk, he couldn't move. All, he had just had to stay in his uh, wheelchair. Hi, uh, my name is David. I'm the father of Michael and Marshall. Uh, two of my kids that have Crab A disease. At four months old, Michael went into Dornbecker's hospital, got a cord blood transplant. Michael 
uh, has zero signs of crab A disease in his body. In 2013, uh, I tried to pass a bill in the state of Oregon to test for crab A disease. We also attempted it in 2015. Um, now we're here, you know, helping out uh, the Emmett's family. If you want to save kids and have kids grow up and enjoy their life and and do whatever those kids do, then you have to pass the bill. It's either yes or no. You're either going to save the child or you're going to let the child die. That's That's really what it is. I'm going to break character and stop playing the part as the narrator and play the part of who I really am. I'm Emmett's dad, which has been the single greatest honor and privilege of my life. We set off to answer the question, should Oregon add Crab A to the newborn screening program? And I think the answer is clear. But in case we've lost sight of what's truly important, maybe the question we should be asking is, are all children valuable?